Now let's go back to the list of our opioid analgesics. We have weak, moderate, and strong agonists. We also have mixed agonists and antagonists. Let's start with the weak agonists. Now, this particular agent is discontinued. It is a weak drug. It used to be used for diarrhea. I only put it there because it's on the one end of the spectrum. Let's move on to the moderate agonists, codeine and oxycodone. These are the most prescribed opioids out there. They are metabolized by cytochrome 2D6 to morphine, which is the active component or active drug. It's actually not quite exactly morphine, but close enough for this lecture. There is a huge genetic variability with respect to how we metabolize cytochrome. And if you go back to your pharmacokinetic lecture, you will see that there's many genes that can encode for the metabolism of this. And so different people will have different ways of metabolizing this drug. Ingestion of alcohol causes major increases in serum levels. So when you prescribe patients codeine, we want to get them to abstain from alcohol. In terms of this medication at low, do at low doses, codeine is used to suppress a cough. So we often put codeine in cough syrups, and in patients who have severe chronic cough, we will actually use codeine tablets on their own. We do not use it for treating diarrhea, but one of the side effects can be constipation. Once again, it is the most commonly prescribed uh, analgesic, and most commonly it's combined with acetaminophen to give extra pain control. This brings us to the strong agonists. There are several in this category. I've listed four of them. There's morphine, meperidine, methadone, and fentanyl. Let's go into detail about each of these. Let's start off with the uh, metabolism of these drugs. Morphine has extensive first-pass metabolism, so if taken orally, it can be very inactive because most of it will get dumped into the bowel. Meperidine has hepatic conjugation and renal excretion. Methadone has high fat solubility. This is an important consideration because we tend to use this for uh, detoxification programs, so given once, it'll stay in the body for a long time. Now, fentanyl is a very potent opioid. It is 80 times more powerful than morphine and 40 times more powerful than heroin. In terms of the metabolites, morphine has a metabolite that is as active as morphine, so going through the liver really doesn't uh, cause a reduction or an increase in function. Meperidine may cause seizures, so it's important to know this when you're choosing this medication. Methadone is... Uh, the metabolism is going to be highly variable. So when we're using this in detoxification programs, we have to be very careful that we're not um, giving too much or too little. In terms of respiratory function, morphine does cause mild respiratory de de depression and low blood pressure. It can cause nausea and vomiting in some patients as well. With meperidine, your side effect profile is pretty much the same as morphine, but you, do can, you can actually induce a serotonin syndrome and hyperpyrexia. Methadone has more respiratory depression, but it is better at analgesia. And finally, fentanyl has more respiratory depression, but it has fewer histamine side effects. In terms of other side effects, constipation is a real problem with morphine. That's because of activity at the mu receptor in the gut. Meperidine, on the other hand, may be used in post-anesthetic shivering. Methadone, once again, is a mu receptor agent, and it's also an NMDA receptor agent. And finally, fentanyl is a strong mu ag agonist, um, and it is used in operative conditions. Morphine, of course, is highly addictive. Meperidine, of course, is very addictive as well. Fentanyl is very addictive. And methadone is singular in that it is often used in detoxification regimens. Have a look at this graph or this table and, and make sure that you understand the differences between these opioid analgesics. Let's talk about meperidine and serotonin syndrome and uh, hyperpyrexia syndrome. I put this slide up so that you can understand the differences between the two. Uh, 
Remember that serotonin syndrome can occur with meperidine when used in combination with SSRIs. So patients who are on selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and meperidine can develop the serotonin syndrome. With respect to the hyperpyrexia syndrome, that's when it's being used in combination with monoamine oxidase inhibitors. So very similar um, symptom to complexes, but very different causes. Remember that serotonin syndrome is potentially fatal. And remember that hyperpyrexia may result in seizures or a coma. So meperidine should be used with caution in these patients.